Wonderful. All right, so today um, we're just going to pray. Lord, as we go into your word, we ask that you would give us um, you give us revelation, you give us insight, and most particularly, we pray we pray that flesh will have no path or or part in this. So, Lord Jesus, we pr we pray that it's all going to be by your Spirit, Lord Jesus. Let your Spirit speak unto us, O oh God. Let your words, O oh Lord, be declared, O oh Lord, pure and true, O oh Lord Jesus. And Lord, have your way, God. Have your way. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. God, we thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, Jesus. Blessed be your your wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So today we're going to be speaking about the terp the topic. The topic I have for us today is um is raising spiritual giants. Um, I just want to like just uh, pretty much give you guys um a rundown to what we have been we are talking about this summer, which is raising Jesus' voices. So it's all about it goes back to the facts of the matter. The the main thing about it is the is Jesus. Jesus is the main thing about what we are speaking about this summer. And um as we go on, we're gonna be seeing things about jesus the words of jesus some of you have read matthew so you know almost all they spoke about the miracles he did the wonders the wonders he performed the works he did but we want to go into the part of we also following the jews the jesus footstep in everything that we do in the way he's he, in the way he was friends to everyone like it was so it was so wild but like jesus the most holy man on earth do you know where his, his friends, his friends were sinners? They call him friends of sinners because everywhere you saw Jesus, Jesus was always hanging out around those who were sinners. And everybody was like, why is he hanging around those who were sinners? The reason was because he said that he did not come for those who were saved, but those who were lost. God is a kind of, Jesus is, Jesus and the way God works is, to, is that he will leave the 99 just for the one. So that's how Jesus works. So um, in this Jesus voices, in raising Jesus voices, we're going to be exploring, we're, we're going to be exploring the heart cry of Jesus. That's what we're going to be exploring. We're going to be exploring the art beats of Jesus. We're going to be exploring the words of Jesus. We're going to be exploring the, the actions of Jesus. We're going to be exploring the message of Jesus. We're going to be exploring the legacy of Jesus. And we're going to be exploring the, 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 the redeeming power, the, 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 the gift of salvation. We're going to be exploring all this part of Jesus because we need to know who we are in Jesus. We need to know what we have in Jesus. And it's from knowing that, that we can actually raise a voice that is committed, that is holy, that is um, longing to do his will, that is according to the will of God. That is how we raise Jesus' voices. We raise Jesus' voices by being Jesus' people. We raise Jesus' voices by being Jesus' people, because we will speak in one accord as he does. We will speak, in, we will speak things that he will say. We will speak, we will speak as vessels for him so that is how we raise jesus voices so i want you guys to be like um energized about this i want you guys to be um i want i want you guys to explore your relationship with jesus explore your relationship with god when it comes to this um particular topic so today like i said we're going to be talking about raising spiritual giants raising spiritual giants so um I want this to be interactive and pretty pretty much please i want emojis i want like reactions i really like reactions i want this to be interactive so i, have, I do have a question um when you think of the word giants what comes to mind when you think of the word giants like what do you think of okay you think of goliath thank you isaac uh please i need comments i need um i need commentaries i need us to go through this together because we have to going to the word of God together. So fairy tales. Oh yeah, actually they don't remember that. But there was this fairy tale about the, the giant and the bean or something. There was like a bean that grew up and um, it grew up into the cloud. And this, yeah, Jack and the beanstalk, thank you. And Jack had to climb. And when he climbed up there, there was like, there was a giant there and the gold, I think the golden goose too was there. I think, uh, yeah, the golden goose too was there. So. That's a very good. That's a very good story. So that's another one. Giants. Yes. Anybody think about giants? Monsters. Monster trucks. I love that. Those things are gigantic, man. I've been watching some monster truck videos, and they are so amazing. You see where the truck flips, and he's about to flip over, and then like he just revs the engine, and he comes back. I'm like, woof. So monster trucks are pretty much yeah close, and even monsters in general. In general, 
um, are pretty much monsters, are pretty much giants. Oh, um, is it the guy that plays for Man Man City? I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that guy is a, that guy is a, is a is a good player. That guy is a really really good player. So yeah, you can call him a giant because man, that guy literally almost like took Man City into the Premier League and UEFA like. He killed it. So giants are uh, also we, we remember we also call like people that are like mainstream, people that are like um like super like huge. We call them giants or not not like huge physically, like like what they are what they are what they are known for, the legacy they have left. We call them giants. So now somebody said Goliath before, and um I want to go into the Bible. I want to talk about giants. So um so first thing you should know is that there's a there is the origin for giants. Um, all those big giants you see, like um, like you see, there were giants in Tor. So people that watch Tor, you could see giants in Tor. Um, the different giants. We have monsters too. You, you see the Jurassic World. You see all those big dinosaurs. Like they are kind of gigantic, but they're not literally giants. But you, if you look at the Bible, you see that giants are actually like we're going by the if we're going by the 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 records written in the Bible. You see that you you will have to believe that giants are actually real. Yeah, like because. If we, if we explore the Bible, if you look at the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, I want you all to open to your Bibles to the book of Genesis 6, verse 4. Once you get there, just give me a thumbs up. Once you get there, give me a thumbs up. If you open your Bible to the book of Genesis 6, verses 4, okay, Isaac is there, Genesis 6, verses 4, Genesis 6, verses 4. Who else is there? Who else is there? Genesis 6, 4, Genesis 6, 4. Thumbs up once you get there. Thumbs up. Okay, all right, it's there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Monique is there, Tolu is there, Genesis chapter 6, verse is 4, Genesis 6, verses 4. Okay, quite a few people are there. So um, I'm going to read. Uh, I don't want to put anybody on the spot yet. So it says, the Nephilims were on earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, it says, those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown if you look at other translations they will say that those those they give back to the race of giants and the way this story goes is that this was before the flood of noah and back then giants were born to this um giants were born to, for because um they were nephilims those like nephilims are like kind of like i think they're like fallen angels don't quote me on this they're like falling angels that were around or they actually did say the sons of god child they said the sons of god came and they, they saw that the, the women of earth were beautiful and therefore they they had children with them they had children with them and as they had children with them they gave back to like stronger men like stronger than normal people like they were so strong they were so big they were so huge and um that's what happened and um basically what ends up happening is that the world becomes really bad there was a lot of violence in the world. There was really, there was a lot of depravity. People did not worship God and angry that it was, God was sad that He created man. And what ended up happening was that God dis God destroyed the world with a flood. You all know about that, the flood. And we all know what the rainbow represents in the Bible. The rainbow, the rainbow represents the um, it, it represents the covenant that God made with man that he will not destroy the earth with um a flood he will not destroy the whole world with a flood again that was his covenant and that's why he sh he sh that's why the rainbow started so that's the, what the bible the bible the biblical accounts and what the bible says about all this so now we're talking about giants these people are powerful people this is where it's sweet. like think about yourself and think about someone that's like taller than you like when i think about giants right now i'm picturing like shaq shaquille shaquille o'neal like that guy is huge but like think about someone like big like that and like maybe even bigger than shaquille o'neal so like that is like super huge if you're thinking about someone that's even bigger than him like that's super huge and maybe like someone that's like maybe like eight feet tall and with muscles and like man the guy can usually like toothpick or break fast so when you start picturing things like this like you you even get you you, you probably get horrified like because even when you when someone that is bigger than you appears before you i know how you feel you probably feel horrified like you are like whenever we see a big person we try not to like mess with them because like oh these people can probably this person can probably beat me up like real bad and make me look black and blue so we try to avoid people like that. We try to avoid giants. We try to avoid going into like fixed fights with them, even verbal abuse with them. Because honey, like girls, like if you're not careful, you can open your sharp mouths. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm picturing some people when I talk about sharp mouths right now. But if you can open your sharp mouths to one girl that is like big like this, they will probably, they'll probably box your face. But jokes aside, though, but like there's some people I'm picturing when it comes to sharp mouths. So if you know yourself, please, I beg, patience is the key. Patience is the key before they beat you up. Uh -huh. So, so that's basically it. So giants are like super huge. They are super fearsome. They have power. They have strength. So now, why are we talking about giants? If you look at the Bible, giants are not represented well. Like almost every giant was an obstacle. A giant was kind of like an obstacle. A giant was kind of like a challenge. You see, the Bible talks about um, some giants in the Bible. So, can anybody tell me about some giants in the Bible? Give me some names of some giants in the Bible, or some scriptures that reference giants in the Bible. I need the first one will probably be easy. The I think somebody said it before, the first giants in the Bible, or the giants you know, Goliath. Okay, that one's a pretty easy one. So Goliath is one of the Goliath is a pretty like famous giant, but the other giants in the Bible. There's one giant that I, I actually don't know his name, but I read it, I read about him, and the guy it was like very, very particular. So they said in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 6. Um, let's open our Bibles to the book of First Chronicles. Chapter 20, verse 6. Uh, hmm. If you're there, you can read for us. If you are there, you can read for us. If you are in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 6. First Chronicles um, 20 verse 6. If you are there, read for us. Who is there? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up if you are there. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I want someone to read. I need a fast reader. I need a fast reader, please. Awesome. 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 All right. Who is going to read? Who is going to read? Who is going to read? I'll read. Okay, thank in you. In other battles with the Philistines at Gate at Garth, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all, who was also a descendant of giants. Okay, all right. So see this person. Literally, this guy has I have five fingers on each of my palm. This guy had one extra one. on both hands and he had extra toes uh, i was just going to show you my toes but yeah he had like extra toes like this is this was literally the giant he had like extra hand he had, had extra toes and he was definitely a very first on person they didn't mention his name but they mentioned this man in particular they mentioned how he, he did things when you, when you see rec records of some people you will see how they do things but if you look at the verses seven it says but when he defied israel jonathan the son of shemir david's brother slew him when he defied people somebody else slew him so some giants are meant to fall and there are some giants that are meant to rise and that's where we're going to i just i just wanted to give you like a a painting of of what giants look like i want you to have like a, a kind of idea like you all have some of you have seen if you have seen the if you have seen this show, Attack on Titans, I'm just saying that you don't have to check it out. It's not for you to check out. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know how fearsome giants can be. But like those giants do fall. Some giant falls and some giants are raised up. And today we are, we are, we are raising up spiritual giants. This is not spiritual giants that will be spiritual issues for us. No, we are raising up ourselves as spiritual giants. Because you have what it takes to be a spiritual giant. You have what it takes. You might be like, oh, like many of the challenges with young people is that they feel like, oh, like I'm young. I don't know much about God. God cannot speak with God cannot speak to me. God only speaks to older people. Uh, God cannot use me. I don't have any talent. I have no money. I am still in my parents' house. God cannot use me. That is where you're wrong. God is ready to raise you up as a spiritual giant. 
And in raising you up as a spiritual giant, you have to recognize that everything that seems like a challenge in your life needs to fall down. Because what happens is as God raises you up as a spiritual giant, everything else begins to fall. Everything that seems heavy in your life, everything that everything that seems gigantic in your life. Like before, maybe maybe you, this thing was a was a nervousness was a big giant for you. Like you were so shy, so nervous. Do you know that for you to be raised up as a spiritual giant, the, the, the giant of shyness needs to fall down in your life? Do you know that, okay, like you were like, God, like, I, I steal God. I don't know why I'm stealing, but Lord Jesus, I know I steal, I used to steal a lot, but I want to change. And do you know that for you to be raised up as a spiritual giant, the, 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 the giant of stealing needs to fall in your life? Do you know the giant of lies needs to fall in your life? Do you know the giant of backbiting, of unforgiveness needs to fall in your life? Do you know that for you to be raised up? Because some of you are like kind of. Some of you might be like, "Oh God, I want you to use me. I want you to. I want me. I want me to. I want, I want to be able to lay my hands on the sick and they will recover. I want to be able to do this." But do you recognize that some giants need to fall in your life? I don't know. Like I'm not really going to key into this scripture, but there's a scripture that kept coming to my mind since like this word came to me, and it was this. It was this scripture of, "We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places." Therefore, put up the old armor of God so that you might stand in the days of, I think, adversity, so that you may stand. So that scripture just kept popping into my head. And I'm like, God, like, reveal this to me. I don't understand, Lord, but I need your revelation. I know that as you speak, you, as I speak, you would speak through me. And I recognize that now because a lot of times we don't know that we have to be raised up as a spiritual giant. We might have an inkling of it. We might be looking at spiritual giants on sure uh, we, we might be looking at spiritual giants like pastor Yadebo, like um like um Oyedepo, like um pastor Rokpo, like apostle selman but we don't look at ourselves like we have the potential to also stand as giants like in this is this is what we should recognize is that that's knowing these people is a privilege knowing Apostle Selman, Daddy Gio, um, as Pastor Yeah, they were knowing um, all these men of God is an advantage for us because we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Because we are not meant to just stay the way we are, we are meant to step on their shoulders and and take up what they have given unto us and therefore be greater there than they were or than they have. That is what we are meant to do. We are spiritual giants. We are spiritual giants. You can picture giants as like something strong, something tall, something powerful, something with six fingers, six, 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 six arms, this and this. But do you know that it did not matter how powerful that giant was? If you look at the verse seven of um, Second Chronicles chapter six, chapter twenty, verse six. If you look at verse seven, I'm going to read that scripture again. It says, it says, verse six says, and yet again there was war at Gath, and there was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty he had 24. see you have the normal you have the normal 20 fingers and toes he had 24. there's six on each hand six on each foot and he also was the son of the giant say but when he defied israel jonathan the son of shimia david's brother slew him it wasn't david that slew him david already slew his own giant david already slew goliath it was another person that slew this man so there are some giants that might arrive in your life. I don't know if it's a giant of failure that seems to be overshadowing you. I don't know if it's a giant of shame that seems to have covered you up, that makes you feel like you are not enough, that it seems like it's, it is bigger than who you are. Those giants will fall. Those giants can fall. Those giants are falling. So I want you to take this consideration and raise yourself up as a spiritual giant. That is what, that's all I'm imploring you to do today. So we're going to look at one of the famous stories that you guys know. You guys know this story. Like, if I if I give it to you guys, you guys will just tell me the story back to back to back to back to back to back. And that's the very easy story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Um, to explore David and Goliath, let's open our Bibles to the book of First Samuel, chapter seventeen. I want all of you to open your Bibles once you get you once you get to that scripture. Please give me a thumbs up. The scripture again is First Samuel seventeen. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17, please. Give me a thumbs up once you get there. Let me let me see. Let me see. Thank you, Tolu. Thank you, Isaac. Um, 
I'm still waiting on you all. I'm still waiting on you all. I am still waiting on you. No one left behind. No man left behind. Today we all rise up as giants. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Fini. Thank you, Fini. Tolu, are you there? Nini, thank you, Nini. Um, sorry, I said Tolu. Tosin, are you there? Thank you, Nini. Thank you, Queen Esther. Who else is there? Okay. Oral, you just joined in. We are looking at the book of First Samuel. The most the most one of the most popular story in the in the world one of the most popular story in the bible the famous story david and goliath thank you thank you, thank you. all right thank you for joining bro uh, first samuel 17 david and goliath story all right so i got many thumbs up i still didn't get i mean i still didn't see some hands up i'm taking note of them um please let's start we're going to start reading from um we're going to start reading from let me see. Uh, uh, who is there? Who is, um, give me a second. Okay, I thought someone raised their hands up. All right, uh, we're gonna start speaking. We're gonna start looking at... Um, someone should start from verses 32 to 33, Isaac, you read 32, 33, then Tolu, you read 34, 35. If you're available to read, please. Um, then Monique, if you're available to read, read 36, 37. Um, yeah, start from verses 32. The Bible verse is 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. Um, please start from verses 32. You can read NLT or NIV or whatever you feel like reading. Um, if you are reading, we can't hear you, by the way. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from the, his youth. Okay, um, I want someone else to read. I think I said, um, who was the next person? Uh, let me see. I think it was Tolu. Tolu was the next person. 34, 35. Verses 34 and 35, please, let's read, let's speak fast. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion, a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And it went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Okay. Um, 36 to, 30, um, to 37, Monique. Your servant, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised for the time will be like one of them, because he has defined the armies of the living God. The Lord will rescue me from the power of a lion, and the power of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Okay. Saul so, so said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Hmm. Okay, 38 to 39. Who wants to read that? Um. Let me see. Finn, are you able to read? Or Grace? Okay, Finn, you can go ahead. Uh, and then Saul dressed David in his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of mail armor on him. Then David fastened his sword over his armor and tried to walk, but he could not because he was not used to them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these because I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Amen. Um, Grace, read 40 to 41. Okay. Um, Grace, I don't know if you can read. Maybe you read the next one. Um, yes, okay, she said she can't read. Um, Victoria, can you read? Oh, Aura. Aura, um, please read 40 to 41, please. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five small stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's pouch. His sling was his hand, 
and they approached the Philistine. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked at and saw David, he disdained him, for he was a youth, pretty and handsome in appearance. Okay. Um, Victoria, 43 to 45. Let's go faster. 43 to 45, if you can read. Um, if you cannot read, um, Queen Esther, are you able to read for us? 43 to 45. 43 to 45. Okay, Queen Esther cannot read. Um, are you fair? Um, I know you just got here, just for you to just be aware, you don't have to read now. It's First Samuel chapter 17 from 32 downwards that we're reading. So I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read 43 to 45. If anybody can continue after I'm, I, I get 45, please let me know. So 43 says, Am I a dog? He roared at David, that you come at me with a stick. And he cursed David by the names of his gods. He said, Come over here, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel. All right, who wants to continue? Um, I am fair, are you there yet? Um, Ori, are you available to me? Yeah, which, which verse did you start at? Um, I stopped at 46. Um, read 46 to 48, and then um, Ori will continue. Okay. This day will the Lord deliver thee into. Uh, let me change my version. Are you good? Okay. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the, the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not say with sword and spear, for for the battle is the Lord's, mm -hmm. and He will give it into your hand, into our hands, give you into our hands. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Okay, um, okay, forty-nine to fifty. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. Okay. The stone sank, sank into his forehead and he fell on his face. Hmm. So David prevailed over the Philistine. Continue with his one. Okay, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling with with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his seat and killed him and cut his head off with it. When the Philistines saw that the champion was dead, they fled. They turned and they ran. Thank you. Thank you everyone for reading. So this is this scripture, we just have to read it because like we need to know the power that we carry. Like we're talking about raising spiritual giants. You can see that it is not by it's not by height. It's not by um it's not by like physical muscle, it's not by like what you what you might seem to be. It's not it's not by strength of, of arm or only alone. It's there is there is something he said, it's the bread of a man. It's the bread of God that gives a man understanding. There's something that God gives a man that, that makes him able to outrun a chariot. The Bible talks about Elijah. That this Elijah, the hand of the Lord was heavily upon him, that he was able to outrun the chariot of a king. So this is horses. We're talking about horses. I don't know who can run better more than the horse. Like, I, I promised you. Not even, like, maybe if boats and the horse, you see on boat, like, the the greatest runner in the world, like right now, if he's running against us, maybe there's a chance that it will be a bit, he can keep the same speed, maybe for just maybe like one minute. But after a while, he will get tired. The us will not get as tired as he does. He will not get as tired quickly. So the us, you know, us racing is a sport on his own and those things run super fast. I don't even know the miles. I don't think we see a boat can even run that much. But this this was this was Elijah. Elijah ran faster than the horses, and he ran for that. He ran for not just a, a short while. He ran like for a while, 
for a long while. Like this is how serious it was. Like the, the king had left before Elijah and Elijah began to run. And Elijah overtook the chariot and got to the, the, the place the king was going before him. So what would you call that if not a spiritual giant? So what I want, to real, want you to realize is that there are a lot of spiritual giants in the Bible. And it is not, it is not by the strength of their shoulder, the, 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 the number of fingers they have. It is by the power of God in them that they have become spiritual giants. And if you recognize that you have what it takes, if you recognize that you have what it takes to become a spiritual giant, it will change, it will change, um, it will change your perspective of a lot of things. Because a lot of times we feel like we are facing giants, but you don't recognize that you are a giant yourself. You feel like everything you're facing is 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 gonna bring you down, but you don't recognize that you have what it takes to overcome whatever it is that looks like a mountain before you. You don't understand that you have what it takes to overcome whatever challenges that might look like like will tear you down. Is it depression? Is it is it just the fact that you're you're always like you don't know what's wrong because you cannot understand it, because you cannot stop it, you cannot control it. That means it's more powerful than you. Please let's let's recognize that we, he that is in us is greater than who is in the world. So if we recognize that we have what it takes to overcome the spiritual giants, we will be, be able to do more than we could ever have done before. So that is the that is the perspective I'm bringing to you all today. We spoke about David and Goliath. If you look at the matchup between David and Goliath, you would never think that David would ever overcome Goliath. There was nothing that said it. There was, it was not, if you even compare like trainings, they said Goliath has been training with a sword from his youth. If you're talking about reach, if you're looking about reach, you see that Goliath's hand is like, big, is, is, his hand is bigger than the waist of David. So if you're looking at all those things, you will see that David was automatically the loser. But when you're looking at what God has put into you, you don't know how you look like to your enemy, to the enemy. You don't know what you look like as a child of God to the enemy. God has put light in you. God has imputed light in you. God has imputed strength in you. So therefore, you are a giant to the enemy. You stand as a spiritual giant to the enemy. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter how you speak. It doesn't matter whatever they might say about you. Because you know God, you stand against, you stand boldly against any plans of the devil. He says, um, he says that he will give us the power to tread upon serpents and no deadly thing shall be able to harm us. That is the power that God has given us as spiritual giant. So I want you to recognize how big you are in Jesus, how strong you are in Jesus. I've spoken about um, David and Goliath. I've spoken about Elijah. I've spoken about, I'm, you can talk about Moses. Moses was a spiritual giant. You can talk about, um, you can talk about Jesus. Jesus was, a, Jesus was a spiritual giant. Jesus is a spiritual giant. So you can talk about Paul. Paul was able to talk to people far and near because of the power of God upon his life. So those are all, these are all spiritual giants that we are talking about today. So I want you to now know this question. You may have a question. Um, you may have this question that like, um, your question might be like, why do you need to become a spiritual giant? So you need to become a spiritual giant because the weapons of our warfare are not canal. But they are mighty true God to be pulling down of, of stronghold. Um, you might, you might, you have to realize that the, the things that we fight, some things we, some things that happens are not by mere physical eyes. And you need to know that you have to be a giant in prayers. You have to be a giant in in, in reading your word. You have to be your, a giant in knowing the will of God and in knowing God's word, voice for you to be able to overcome whatever challenges might come your way. So I want you to recognize that it is necessary that you are a giant spiritually. You can't just stay a, a runt for life. You don't stay a runt for life. You have to grow. And you grow by the word of God. You grow by prayers. You grow by living according to his will. You grow by obedience so that you will stand firm as a giant so that whenever the enemy comes and he will surely comes he will surely come you will be able to stand firm that you will speak a word you speak the word in the name of jesus and things will begin to work out the things that are chaos will become order in your life so that is the power you have as a spiritual giant so now the question is now how to become a spiritual giant and i've, I've spoken about this like throughout what i've been saying it is living the holy life and how do you live a holy life? By obeying the word of God, by hating sin with a passion. Whatever is sin in your life, 
you detest it. You will tell God that God, I don't want no longer to, I don't want to be in this sin any longer. I don't want to be lying every anymore. I don't want to be stealing anymore. I don't want to be um angry all the time. I don't want to be acting out all the time. I want to, I don't want to be on, I don't want to be um be finding it difficult to forgive. God, I don't want to be keeping people in my heart. I don't know whatever it is that might be a challenge for you, but we have to realize that whatever God says is, whatever God says that we should not do, whatever the word of God says, that is what we should follow. And anything that we do other than what the word of God says, it's, it's, it's sin in our life, and it will be a barrier to our standing in the spirit. So in order to be a spiritual giant, we have to live a holy life. And holiness is shunning and wasting. And holiness is walking with God so that you would grow in him, so that you'll be in the light. So the other thing is you have to have constant fellowship with God. Constant fellowship with God. Constant fellowship with God is very necessary. The Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Constant fellowship with God is very powerful because do you know what happens? When the devil tries to come against you, they will see that you have backing. You have a God that is with you, that is in you, that makes you stand stand it does not matter what Goliath is in your way because you have come in the name of the lord you will overcome every giant so the other thing you should know is prayers and when you can to so fast also prayers is find the time the bible says pray without season and every time you can i just want to say thank you but i just want to worship you but i'm praying about this situation i'm praying about this this part of my life god i have problems with reading your word oh god i have problems with with the fact that i always lie to my mom because i'm always scared Lord, i have problems because i'm always like so scared of my dad i'm always like lying god i have, pro I have problems because i'm always talking bad about my whatever it is that might be your challenge but i tell you that if you give god a chance if you speak to god about these issues if you speak to god about your concerns i promise you he will be there for you he will be happy to listen to you and he'll be happy to make a way for you to do better so please take hold of this opportunity in prayers in fasting fasting is when you abstain for, from food you can do it for like a certain, a certain number of um, hours in the day just abstain from food and when you're abstaining from food, you have to read your words too. Don't just abstain from food and be watching anime just like that. Please read your word also. Don't just like say you're abstaining from food. Please make sure you, you do spiritual things. Read, a, watch a message, play gospel music, read your word. Because you don't know in that place where you're fasting, anything that you are listening to, anything that your, your environment really matters because it's going to soak into you even more. So please take note of that. And the big, one of the biggest thing is humility. Like I was talking to a friend and we we're talking about humility. And one thing that we learned from School of Disciples, I'm um, sorry, Esther. One thing that we learned from School of Disciples is that when you, um, they said, the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus was taking seven steps down so that he can reach the highest point in the universe. And that means when the devil was making plans and people were surrounding him and and shouting at him and insulting him and throwing rocks at him and dragging him to the floor and and spitting on him and beating him and whipping him and kneeling his hands to the cross and everything while all those things were happening he was being exalted because he was humble the he said god is always looking for a broken broken out and a contrite spirit you will not reject so i want you to deal with god in humility you, you should not get to it you should never get to a point where god is using you to do miracles where like you prayed for somebody and they received healing or you prayed for somebody and um maybe they they almost had a car crash and they tell you that oh because god has been with me i didn't have a car crash and you're like oh i prayed for them yes you should be always happy and confident in your prayer because you know that god always answers you but you should never get to the point where where you are proud because pride comes before the fall and because pride is you trying to take glory from god so i don't want you to ever be proud in any of in, in in any part of your life because we are spiritual giants we don't we don't live in pride we live in the understanding that god is with us we live in the understanding that all that we have all that we can achieve all we achieve is because of god because do you know why that is important if you don't have the presence of god upon your life if you don't have the backing of god upon your life then you would not be able to do these things then you will lose all that you think you have you think you think the spiritual muscles you have is just because of you no it's, it's always because of god so take knowledge of that live a humble life 
live a, a life of humility towards God. And when I'm talking about humility, I don't, it doesn't mean that you should be bound before everybody. Sometimes you might be bowing, but your heart is not bound. Because I know some of you, like, you, some of you, you go to church and they're like, there's this particular auntie that always eye you and wait for you to, to see to see if you don't greet her. If you don't greet her, she will come for you. Be like, ah, ole, ole, kiyoni. You can't greet somebody. Some of you have, have, have known those people. So when you see them, you just say, hello, ma, hello, ma. In your mind, you're like, because you're, you're, you, might be bound down, you might be bound down physically, but your, your heart isn't bound. So please, let's take knowledge of that. We should live a life of humility. It's not about begging or, or just bowing like that. It is about your heart being sincere, bowing your heart towards God. Letting no pride overrule your life. Not because, because whatever, what, what height do you think you have reached that you thought you did without God? Please think about it. How tall do you think you have become that you did it without God? So if you can recognize that everything that you have in this world is because of God, you will also recognize that, that you have to stand and be a giant of humility that is standing for God. And that is what David did. David did all his life. David remained humble before God. No matter if when he became king, he never changed. He always remained humble before God. So your the posture of your heart really matters. Your, the posture of your heart really matters to God. It matters a lot. And um, like I said, we have to, we are raising spiritual giants in this um, Bible study. All of you have what it takes to be a spiritual giant. All of you have what it takes. It is by following the guidelines, by following the guidelines of, of being holy, of reading your word, of constant fellowship with God, of prayers, you would stand as a giant. And the Bible says that if you have faith enough, as small as a mustard seed, and you can tell this mountain to move, this mountain will surely move. That's the power you have as a spiritual giant that no giant can stand before you. No physical system, no system, no physical, um, no physical man, no, 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 no person, no, no, no enemy, no devil, no demon can stand before you. That's the power that you have, that you spread upon serpents, that in the name of Jesus, you will cast out demons. Because I know some of you are afraid of demons, some of you are afraid of devils, and it is understandable because you, you see them as giants right now. But I'm telling you that even Goliath can fall. Even Goliath can fall. Therefore, every giant in your life can fall down tonight as long as you believe it. The Bible says, and um, I think um, Amaka is here too. We're talking about this um, Romans chapter 8 verses um, maybe 16 or 19 or 20 something. Uh, we're talking about the earnest creature is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. You, There's something that I picked up in this scripture and I just like, I just like, Put them together because when we started this we spoke about genesis chapter 6 verse 4. we spoke about genesis chapter 6 verse 4 and we we're talking about the creation of giants the creation of giants in genesis chapter 6 verse 4 was that said the nephilims were unhurt in those days and also afterwards when the sons of god came to the daughters of men said they bore children to them those were the mighty men who, who were of old that they became giants. Those are the men that became giants, the men that were born from these Nephilims or these fallen angels. I'm just gonna say fallen angels for now, and the daughters of men. But do you know the fascinating thing about it is that what God has done for us is that he has brought us into adoption. But what do I mean by adoption? Do you, do you recognize that we always call ourselves children of God? So now we are the children of God. He says that, uh, he says that for as many that has, have believed him, they have the power to become sons of God. So even to those that have believed in him. So please, let, let's let's recognize that we are children of God. So if God's sons back in Genesis, by being with the children of men could produce giants, how much more are we that we are children of God? How much more are we giants spiritually. So I just want you to recognize recognize that as a child of God, you are a giant spiritually because you have the power of God in you. You are a child of God, like a child of God. You understand that? Like, like if you understand this, the power of what I'm saying is that these giants that were born, that we saw massive and big, they were people born from angels or fallen angels and man. But now we are born of God. 
and therefore we are more gigantic than they could ever be. We stand as giants, spiritual giants. It doesn't matter your stature. It doesn't matter if you are five foot, nothing. It doesn't matter if you are four foot, anything. It doesn't matter if you are three foot, one inches, jokes aside, but you are a giant spiritually as long as you choose to be on the Lord's side, as long as you follow the will of God, as long as you continue with God. Therefore, you have the power to cast out demons. You have the power to heal the sick. You have the power to, to have a relationship with God where you can come before him with boldness. Because I want you to start little. I want you to start by having that relationship with God. I want you to start by recognizing that every Goliath in your life can fall, which includes the Goliath of shame, of depression, of 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 of, of, of pornography, the Goliath, the Goliath of, of of bad friends, the Goliath of um, anything you're going through. I don't know if it's the Goliath of disobedience, whatever is the Goliath in your life. I promise you, just call on the name of the Lord. As David did, David went before Goliath. He said that I know that my God will cause you or cause you to die to my hands tonight. It will cause you to die to my hands. And David decreed this thing, and it was so, and the giant fell. I see giants falling tonight in the name of Jesus. I see giant, I see spiritual giants rising for God tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. Um I'm gonna pray very hard today about these two things, about the the, the 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 rising of spiritual giants and the falling of the the, the falling of every giant that is against your life. Uh, but before we proceed there, I want us to think about, I want us to discuss something real quick. And um, my first question to you all is that: Do you think you have what it takes to um to cause a giant to fall in your life? I don't know if that question makes sense, but I want to, I'm going to ask it again. Do you think you have what it takes to cause the a giant to fall in your life? It could be any giant. It could be any challenge. Just think about it like, okay, what is a giant in my life? A giant in my life could be my challenge, whatever challenge I'm facing right now. Do you think you have what it takes to cause that challenge, that giant to fall? That's my question. Whatever challenge you are, you are facing right now, do you think you have what it takes to overcome that challenge? I want I want answers. Like I don't know what you guys might be going through. All of you, everybody has their own problems, not problems, but everybody has their own challenges. And I, I'm just asking you: Do you think you have what it takes? Justin said yes, sir. I think it's only one person that is a believer tonight. One person that is a believer, including myself. I believe that I can overcome these giants in my life. I don't know what your own giant is, but me, I'm a believer that I can overcome it. If David could cause a giant to fall, I believe that greater that is he, greater is he that is living inside of me than he that is in the world. That is what I believe. That I will cause every giant to fall in my life. So please let us um understand that understand that. Do you know that the power that you have that will cause giants to fall is the same power that you have that will cause demons to be casted away. It's the same power you have in you that can cast out demons. That power is in you. You might be wondering that, oh, demons are scary. Demons are like this. They have so much, they seem to have so much power. Um, all those Nigerian movies I watched back then are not doing me well. All those horror movies. All those demons, they are nothing before God. They said even the Bible says that resist the devil and he will flee before you. He will flee before you. So please, we should understand the power we carry as spiritual giants, that even demons, demons will be casted out in our lives. I don't know, um, Dunsin was talking about something to this night, and he was talking about darkness. And I realized that one of the things, when you're under a spiritual attack, when you're under a spiritual attack, and when I say spiritual attack, like when I experience personality was depression when you're under such a spiritual attack you see only fog and you see fog and darkness i don't know if some of you have experienced that but you experience darkness and that is a sign of the demon because of a demon because the, the bible talks about god being light and everything that has god's presence has light because the bible talks about man and the bible says that they say and and he say the light was the he said the life was the he said the light was the life of man so the, the fact that we have life means that we have light so therefore everything that operates outside the presence of god is darkness and because of that that is why we experience them as darkness and i i feel like this might be going over some of you, uh, you some of your heads but one thing i just want you to recognize is that that you have the power 
to cast out demons. I want you to recognize that. You might not believe that today, but I want you to always know whenever anything comes to your mind or if you are going through that challenge right now, or if you know anyone that is going through that challenge, that's that you have the power to cast out demons. I want you to recognize that. So the other question I would, um, the other question I want you guys to think about is that you should think about it. Like, do, do I, do I have the faith to cast out demons? I want you to think about it. You don't have to answer right now, but I want you to think about it. Do I have the faith to cast out demons? Do I have the faith? Maybe simpler words is, do you have the faith to overcome your fears? all the fears in your life, because we have different type of fears. Um, I'm not going to call anybody's fears out, but everybody knows their fears. I have my own fears. Like there are some things that I would not want to deal with. I have my own fears and probably insecurities. And the, 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 the thing, the words right now is that, do you have the, do you have the faith to overcome these fears? And that is what we should look at in our lives tonight. Because he said he has, he has not given us the spirit to fear. He has not given us the spirit to fear. He doesn't. He has not given us the spirit to fear. But he has given us the spirit of. He has given us the ability to even call him Abba Father. So I want us to recognize that we are not for fear, but we are for faith. We are not for fear, but for faith. I want us to recognize that with our whole heart. So please, um, because of our time, I'm not going to continue or do say anything much. But I want you to just recognize that, and we're going to begin to pray now. Does anybody have any question? Any contribution? Uh, please feel free before we pray. If you have any contribution, any questions, anything that you have conviction about, um, I want us to like just just a few minutes to just share that. If you have anything that comes to mind, please feel free to share. Feel free to share. All right. So now my question for for you is that: Do you think you can overcome the giants in your life? Do you think you can overcome the giants in your life after you have listened to this message? that you can overcome the fears in your life? Do you think you can overcome the, the challenges, the giants in your life? Okay, I see Isaac believes it. Isaac believes it. Ori believes it. Tolu believes it. Do you think you can overcome the challenges in your life? Tosin believes it. I am fair believes it. Fini believes it. So because we believe this, Monique believes it, Nini believes it. Because we believe this, we're going to cry out. And for those that don't believe it, I just pray that the fate of others will carry you up today. But sometimes some things are so big in our lives that we think we cannot even overcome it. Sometimes it might even become, it might be things that we don't have any power over. There are some challenges that get to a point where they are beyond our capacity. We cannot even imagine ourselves solving the situation. Sometimes it seems bigger than our hands. Sometimes it might be our parents' issues. And we are like, how do I help my own father? My father is the one that takes care of me. How do I help him? It could be your mother's issues. You'd be like, how do I help my mom? My mom is the one that takes care of me. How can I help her? Like, what is this giant that is before you? What is this giant that is before your family? What is this Goliath that is representing shame, bitterness, sorrow, poverty? Whatever is representing your life, what is this giant? We are crying out today that this giant will fall. The Bible says that, that same first Samuel, that same first Samuel, it says that, if you look at the book, if you look at it, it says that, so David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, without a, a sword. In his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. We are going to cry out to God today that, Lord, we are calling on your name that every Goliath in our life, let them fall down in the name of Jesus. Every Goliath in our life, we decree tonight they shall fall in the name of Jesus. They shall fall. They shall lose their head. Every giant in my life, every giant of sickness, every giant of shame, every giant in my life, oh God, I decree tonight they will fall. They will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree, oh Lord, they will fall tonight in my life. Oh God, every giant in my life, Lord, tonight I decree and declare they will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, I decree, oh God, they will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, I decree, oh God, they will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, I decree, oh Lord, tonight they will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, I decree, oh God, they will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, I decree, oh God, by the reason of this time of prayer, we decree on this Bible study that they will fall in the name of Jesus. 
every giant in our lives. We decree, oh God, let them fall in the name of Jesus. Every Goliath shall die. Every Goliath shall fall. Every giant in our life, Lord, by the power of the word. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your word be spoken expressly tonight. Every giant in our life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in our life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in our life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in our life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in our life shall fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life, oh God, today is the last day for them. They shall fall in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. We are going to open this scripture. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to open the book of Ephesians. If you have your Bible, please let's quickly open to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. The book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading for the, from the NIV version. NIV. It says in verses 12, it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. He said, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. He said, with the breastplate of, of righteousness in a place. He said, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. He said, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. He said, take the element of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So now, if you recognize this, when David was going before Goliath, he did not take, they, they, they tried to put sword upon or, or on top of him. They tried to put helmet up on top of him. They tried to put, they tried to put, give him sword. They tried to give him everything. But he was uncomfortable. He could not go with the, he could not go with the arsenals of this world. He could not go with the armors of this world. He knew that there was something else that was more important. He knew that this power, the armor of God was more important than whatever they gave him. So therefore he asked them to take it off. And he only went with his sling and with his stone. So I don't know, if you don't know what you have, Sometimes we don't know what we have. We don't know the power that we have as children of God. We don't know the power that we carry in the spirit. What you carry is the word of God. What you carry is the righteousness, the element of salvation, all your spiritual armament. They make you ready for to fight giants. We are going to cry unto God. We are going to pray that, Lord Jesus, according to the power I have in the spirit, according to your word, according to your word, I decree, according to your word, that every giant in my life will fall in the name of Jesus. Every giant in my life will fall in the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to mention any giant in your life. Is it a giant of shame? Is it a giant of pain? Is it a giant of unforgiveness? Is it even the giant of a broken heart? I don't know whatever giant you might be facing. I don't know what whatever situation you might be fa facing. Is it a giant of confusion? Is it a giant of misunderstanding? Is it a giant of the pleasure of sin that you just you just want to you just want to do the wrong things? You just you just feel like you're just attracted to those things. I don't know what can be a challenge for you. But I want you to cry out to God that, Lord, let this giant fall in my life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that what is that mountain before Zerubbabel? It shall be made plain. We are going to decree that, Lord, every giant in my life, every situation that has turned to a giant in my life, I pray, oh God, let them fall tonight in the name of Jesus. Just like the walls of Jericho fell, I want these giants to fall in the name of Jesus. Everything. Is it depression, Lord? It will be it be turned to nothing. Joy will fill my heart in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare tonight, oh God, every giant in my life, oh God, they will fall into pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. They will fall into pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. They will fall into pieces in the name of Jesus. They will fall into pieces in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They will fall into pieces in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, following Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. I don't know why I'm going to say this prayer, but 
one thing the devil does is that when the devil carries us out from our spiritual covering, from where you know your spiritual friend, from where you know your churches, from where you know your people, what the devil does is that the devil tries in that place where you are away from your friend, away from your covering, away from your morning devotion, away from your Bible study. What the devil tries to do is that he tries to bring giants into your life he tries to bring the wrong things into your life that you will be drawn away from god i want you to pray this prayer that anything that is drawing me away from god i pray that they will, they will, they will it will fail in the name of just anything that is drawing me away, away from god let that power fail over my life in the name of just whatever is drawing me away from god i pray that their power will Quail in my life in the name of Jesus. Anything that is drawing away my sister, my brother, away from God, Lord, let them lose their hold in the name of Jesus. Anything that is drawing me away from God, Lord, just let it end in the name of Jesus. Nothing will be able to draw me away from God in the name of Jesus. Anything that is drawing me away from God, let them fail in the name of Jesus. Let them end in the name of Jesus. Let them end in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now we have come to the last prayer point for tonight. You are going to pray this prayer with all your heart. And you are going to decree and declare tonight. You are going to say that God raise me up as a spiritual giant for you. Raise me up as a spiritual giant, a strong man for the kingdom, a man of holiness, a woman of holiness, a woman of goodness. Lord, Raise me up, oh God, as a spiritual giant that I will stand firm in you, oh God, that when the wiles of the devil comes, oh Lord, I will resist it, oh Lord. Make me a spiritual giant. You made Elijah a spiritual giant. He outrun the chariots of Ahab. You made Elijah a spiritual giant. Oh, Yeleke, when men came to him to come and arrest him, he told he arrested them instead. Amaneke. You need David a spiritual giant. When Goliath appeared before him, Goliath had to die. Lord, make me a spiritual giant in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me begin to walk with explosive grace, explosive miracles. Let my hand do miracles. Let my mouth, my the words of my mouth, heal the sick. In the name of Jesus. Make me a spiritual giant, O oh Lord, for you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Make me a spiritual giant for God, O oh Lord. Let me be on the Lord's sides all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you because we know it is done. Thank you, Lord, for your good word. Thank you for your mercy, Lord, that I endured forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for tonight, oh Lord, for your power and your grace, Lord, for this word that has come upon us, freely given, oh Lord, and our fresh, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the fresh gospel, Lord Jesus. We bless your name for tonight. Lord, have your way, take control, and everything is in your hands, Jesus. We bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. All right, thank you guys for tonight. Um, that was just a short word that I had for you. Sorry because of our time. Our time is like long gone. Apologize. Uh, try, I'll try better so that we can keep to time. But thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Um, I hope you all were blessed because that's the main thing. I hope every spiritual giant in your life will um, fall. And I hope, um, sorry, every, every giant of negativity in your life will fall and God will raise you up as nations because nations are inside of you. You will be spiritual giants for God in the name of just Thank you so much. Um, I would like to meet Cam. I don't know if Cam is someone we know already, but Cam, if you are new, please just introduce yourself. Uh, you can just say your name and where you are from and your age. So I would appreciate it. But if you are someone that we know already, just, just let us know, please feel free. I'm going to start. Hi, I'm Cam. I'm from Houston and I'm 13 years old. You're 13? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Um, Do, do you mind sharing who, who invited you? Was it Fiend or somebody else? Yes, it was Fiend. Oh, thank you, Fiend. God bless you for inviting. 